Hello, my name is Dr. Reka Chaudhry, and I'm a neuro-oncologist with the University of Cincinnati Brain Tumor Center. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about chemotherapy for brain tumors. There are two types of chemotherapy for brain tumors. One type is the traditional chemotherapies that we use in brain tumors that directly attack the DNA of the tumor cells. The other type are called targeted agents. Targeted agents, like Avastin, work to target specific areas on the tumor cells, sparing the other cells in the body. In the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about these two types of chemotherapy and hopefully explain in more detail what each of these types are. I want to remind you that I am describing the chemotherapy regimen that we use here at the University of Cincinnati Brain Tumor Center and caution you that other programs may vary slightly in the way they use these drugs. Traditional chemotherapy usually works by damaging the DNA of the tumor. Today, we're going to focus on Temodar because Temodar is the chemotherapy often used to treat brain tumors. Temodar can also be referred to as temozolomide, but today I will refer to it as Temodar. Temodar is a form of chemotherapy that is in the pill form. It was approved by the FDA after a very important study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2005. This study randomly allocated brain tumor patients to radiation alone or radiation plus Temodar. The patients in the arm that got Temodar and radiation doubled their survival at two years. This made Temodar an important part of our treatments against brain tumors. Luckily, Temodar has very few side effects, and therefore it's very well tolerated. The three main side effects that it can cause are nausea, unique infections, and a drop in your blood count. We can almost always control the very little nausea that's associated with Temodar. We have medications called antiemetics. Examples of these medications are Ondansetron, Zofran, and Anzimet. I have rarely had to stop Temodar because a patient has too much nausea. Temodar can also affect your blood counts, specifically your lymphocyte counts. When your lymphocyte count drops, you become more susceptible to what we call unique infections. I call these unique infections because most patients with a normal lymphocyte count do not get these infections. Examples of these infections are shingles and pneumocystis carnine pneumonia. Your doctor will prescribe an antibiotic that will prevent the pneumocystis carnine pneumonia. Usually it's a sulfa drug. So if you have an allergy to a sulfa drug, you should let your doctor know. Also, if you have a history of shingles, you should probably let your doctor know that as well. And he or she may want to put you on a medication to prevent that from coming back. The most important side effect for you and your doctor is lowering of your blood counts. Rarely, Temodar can significantly lower your blood counts and you will need to stop the drug and maybe even get a blood transfusion. Because of this uncommon but serious side effect, your doctor will check your blood counts weekly while you are on radiation and Temodar, and then monthly. In the rare event that your blood counts do reach a dangerous level, your doctor will tell you what precautions to take. At that time, you may be more susceptible to some infections from the people around you and at a greater risk for bleeding. Until that time, however, you should continue to exercise, eat healthy, and interact with your loved ones without fears or restrictions. Remember, this is an uncommon side effect and your doctor will tell you when you need to take precautions. After about six weeks or at the completion of your radiation, you'll get a whole month off from doctors and doctor's visits. This is if you're not on a clinical trial. At the end of your month off, you'll get an MRI that will likely be your new baseline MRI and will be the MRI that we use in the future to compare all your other MRIs to. This MRI may have some changes on it from the radiation therapy, so no need to worry if there are some minor changes on your new MRI. At the end of this month off, you will also start what we call maintenance Temodar. This Temodar will be once a month for five days out of the month only, but it will be a little bit larger dose than the Temodar you took during radiation. 
you will take this for 12 months or a year's time. Now many people are scared of being on chemotherapy for a year, but many patients during this time are able to get back to their normal exercise, work, and social schedules. During this year, you will get MRIs every two to three months. Just a reminder, you should tell your doctor about all medications that you're on, including supplements and special diets. For instance, increased grapefruit in your diet can cause decreased clearance of the Temodar. So again, remember to tell your doctor about all special supplements, diets, and medications you're on. Now we're going to switch gears a bit to the main targeted agent used in brain tumors. This drug is called Avastin or Bevacizumab. For the purposes of this video, I will refer to this drug as Avastin. Avastin is a very interesting drug in that it works by blocking a substance called vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF for short. Avastin blocks the VEGF from reaching to its receptor on the blood vessels on the tumors. VEGF reaches the tumors and turns on blood vessel growth, feeding the tumors. Brain tumors are very vascular and have a lot of blood vessels, so they need blood to grow. I'll make the analogy. If you are at war with your tumor, then Temodar is shooting at the enemy and killing the enemy. However, Avastin is cutting off their food supply. Because Avastin works in this unique way, it also has unique side effects as compared to other chemotherapies. Some of the more common side effects are high blood pressure and protein in your urine. Because of this side effect, your blood pressure and your urine will be checked at every Avastin visit. The protein in your urine is completely reversible and your doctor may hold your Avastin if he or she detects it. If your blood pressure increases, your doctor may hold your Avastin or put you on an extra blood pressure medication. Avastin is an IV drug and it requires a port to be placed. A port is a little button-like structure under your skin and your chest. The nurses will use this to access your veins. This will make Avastin infusions and blood draws much easier. The doctor may want you to wait for about two weeks after your port is placed to start the Avastin. We want to make sure that your port heals properly. Avastin is given every two weeks in the infusion center. It is given for 90 minutes the first time, 60 minutes the second time, and then after it's given for 30 minutes every time. Now remember, when scheduling Avastin into your busy day, these times do not include such things as lab draws, check-in, and accessing your port. While on Avastin, you will get MRIs at regular intervals. These MRIs can be sometimes difficult to interpret. At that time, the doctors may take your scan to tumor board to discuss your case with radiologists who specialize in brain tumors. Again, please tell your doctor about any medications, supplements, or diets that you're on, as many of these can interfere with the metabolism of Avastin. If you're interested in learning more about the UC Brain Tumor Center, please contact us at 513-584-8642 or visit our website at uchealth.com slash brain tumor.